In this screencast, we'll continue our discussion of composition and recursion uh, that we have done in the previous three uh, uh, screencasts on this topic. Uh, so this is another uh, definition of uh, primitive recursion. So uh, let's assume that we have two uh, total functions. Uh, the first function is f of um, uh, n arguments, x1 through xn. This is a total function. In the previous definition of primitive recursion, uh, one argument definition, uh, we have also, uh, well, we've dealt with one total function, g. Here we have two. Uh, so, and then uh, another uh, function, uh, total function of n plus two arguments, x1 through xn, and then we have the last two arguments, xn plus one and uh, xn plus two. And this is also a total function. And uh, we're going to take uh, these two functions and obtain h, another function, total function, uh, from f and g by means of two recurrences. So the uh, first recurrence is x, h of x1 through xn and 0 is equal to a call of f, the value of f on x1 through xn. And uh, in the recursive case, uh, h of x1 through xn of um, t plus 1, where t is a natural number, is equal to uh, g of t, then um, a call uh, of h on x1 through xn and t, so the previous value, uh, t plus 1, and then the previous value is t, and then x1 through xn. So this is um, essentially the same idea as in the uh, uh, first definition, except that now g uh, has access to the arguments, x1 through xn. So here's an example, x1, uh, the base case, is just the call uh, to f, and then let's consider another example, where what is the value of h of x1 through xn on 1, right? And that's equal by definition, uh, uh, g of 0, h x1 through xn, 0, and uh, the arguments passed. So um, an interesting theorem, this is uh, theorem 2.2 uh, in uh, uh, from the third chapter of Computability, Complexity, and Languages by Davis, Weyoker, and Segal. Uh, so let's suppose that H is obtained from F and G by uh, primitive recursion, and let F and G be computable, then H is computable. So what do we need to show? All we have to do is to uh, write an L program, because we already know that H is total, because F and G uh, are total functions. So. Uh, so to, pro uh, to prove that a function is computable, we need to uh, show that it is total, and it is total, and then we need to write an L program that computes that function. So let's write this program. Um, first, uh, this is the base case. Uh, y is assigned the value of f x1 uh, uh, through xn. So this, this macro exists because by assumption f is computable. So there's a program, L program, that computes L. Then uh, z is assigned the value of 0. And then uh, we have the la label of a1. And uh, xn plus 1 uh, encodes the value of t. So if uh, uh, xn plus 1 is equal to 0, then we'll just go to the end, and the value of y is uh, the call to f. Otherwise, if xn plus 1 is not equal to 0, then we call g on the value of z1, which is 0 initially, then the value of y which is f of x1 through xn, and then the arguments. And g is computable too, so the existence of that L macro is assured. Then we increment the value of z um, uh, plus 1 by 1, and decrement the value of t, or the value uh, of uh, xn plus 1, right? which essentially encodes the value of t to 1, and then we go back to a to check whether t, uh, we have reduced uh, xn plus 1 to 0, or in other words, uh, t is 0. So we're doing it in, in reverse, in the reverse order, right? And uh, so the, the claim is that, let's say, uh, let's call this program P, and the claim uh, is that P computes, um, uh, computes uh, H. Uh, it computes H of uh, X1 uh, through Xn T. Okay, this function. Okay, and, and this is, um, I guess, readily apparent. Uh, let's say uh, if the value of T is 0, um, t is encoded in xn plus 1, then um, uh, xn plus 1 is 0. 
and uh, y ends up being a call to um, uh, f and that's it then the program terminates because then uh, xn plus 1 um, the third line uh, just goes to the exit so y is the uh, is equal to x1 uh, through xn a 0 and that's the value of f um, on x1 or uh, f of f uh, x1 through xn okay not so, okay this is the uh, let's let's consider if the uh, if t is equal uh, 1 right or xn uh, plus 1 is equal to 1 then um, okay y is first bound to the call of f uh, gets the value of f x1 uh, through xn and then we go into that loop because xn uh, plus 1 is not equal to 0 then uh, the next value of y is um, is equal to g of uh, 0 because z1 is uh, 0 and then f of x1 through xn x1 through xn right okay then um, and that will be the value of um, y at the end of the program because on the next iteration we going to go out of that um, loop. Well, let's suppose that t is equal to 2, uh, then uh, well y first is equal to f of x1 through xn, uh, then on the first iteration of the a1 loop y is equal to uh, g of uh, 0, and then f of x1 through xn, and x1 through xn. Right. Okay, this one. And then on the uh, next iteration of the loop, then, okay, t um, uh, uh, is decremented um, by 1, or xn plus 1. That encodes the value of t, so t becomes 1, or xn plus 1 becomes 1. And y, uh, next iteration, is uh, equal to g of 1, f of x, um, uh, well, and then uh, uh, g of 0, f of x1, xn, x1 through xn. That's the previous value of y, g of 0, f of x1 through xn, x1 through xn. And then uh, we uh, uh, call to g1 and uh, has, to, um, has to have access to these arguments as well. And that's the value of uh, uh, y, because on the next iteration we exit um, from the loop because the value of t becomes 0. We decrement xn plus 1 by 1. So that's the value of y. And um, in, uh, in general, right, um, if um, the value of xn plus 1 is equal to some natural number j, uh, and x, plus, uh, x uh, uh, sub n plus 1 encodes the value of t in that uh, h of x1 through xn and t, then uh, y uh, will successively take on the values of x1, uh, a, a, h of x1 through xn of 0, then h of x1 uh, through xn of 1, uh, assuming that j is greater than or equal to, greater than uh, 1. Uh, and then h of uh, x1 uh, through xn of j. So, um, and... Uh, Oh, in, or to put it differently, y takes on the value of f of x1 through xn, and then of uh, uh, g of 0, uh, f of x1 through xn, x1 through xn, and then it will take on the value of y equals to g1, and then the previous value of y, g0 of f of x1 through xn, uh, x1 through xn, so this, this value. Um, and uh, x1 through xn, And, and and so forth. So ultimately, it um, will be uh, it will hold the value of y, uh, g of uh, j minus one, uh, the previous value of h x one um, through x n x n j minus one, and these arguments x one through x n. So this is the second definition of uh, primitive recursion.